Someone literally commented that they picked my YouTube video because there was an Asian girl on the thumbnail. But honestly, let's be real. No one does rice like Asians do. So let me teach you how to make perfect instant pot rice. I'm pretty confident here that literally no Japanese person would eat long grain white rice, at least in Japan. I make my short grain white rice in my Japanese rice cooker. Most Asian thing ever. But I'd say that most people in the US use either long grain white rice, basmati rice, or jasmine rice. This method will work for all three of those the same. This method will not work the same for brown rice, short grain rice, or medium grain rice. In my last video, where I'm literally wearing the same outfit, I got a lot of the same comments. So I'm gonna go through all of those, answer all your questions on how to make the rice. Today, we're making long grain white rice in my Instant Pot Duo Plus and my Instant Pot Duo Original. <laughs> I'm doing two instant pots, so I'm measuring one cup of rice for one and three cups of rice for the other. Do you want to know the secret to getting great engagement on a YouTube video? Just don't wash your rice. And people could not be more divided on this. For me, I always wash my Japanese rice, my wild rice, my brown rice. It just never really occurred to me to wash my long grain white rice just because that's what it says on the package. However, YouTube came after me and they were not happy. John Lennon writes, she did not wash the rice before cooking it. What the actual is this? Yikes. Because I don't want more engagement today, I guess I'm going to wash it. I have sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these rice washing baskets. You need to get one. First instant pot gets one cup of rice washed. Three cups in here. And no, rinsing the rice does not change the amount of water that you need or the time. Next is the water ratio. For every one cup of rice, I like to add one and a quarter cup of water. So the ratio is one to 1.25. Give it a shake to evenly distribute. The ratio for three cups of rice is the same one to 1.25. So I'm adding three and three quarters of a cup of water to my three cups of rice. Of course, you can add chicken broth, beef broth, bouillon, whatever you want for more flavor. Just a dash of salt and shake. And now we cook. Now this is super important before you cook, you need to ensure that your sealing knob is in the sealing position. If it is over here in the venting position, all the water is going to evaporate out of this hole and then your rice will burn. If you have one of these models that has the updated lid, then this is already done for you. It's default to the ceiling. Now, if you're new to Instant Pot cooking, this rice button is a preset. It goes to 12 minutes on low pressure, which you can use, but I prefer to just use a manual setting. To cook Instant Pot rice, press the manual button right here and adjust the time. My tried and true method is three minutes on high pressure. The other thing you need to remember is to make sure that this keep warm button is on before you start pressure cooking. Otherwise, it will not do the natural pressure release. If your Instant Pot doesn't have a manual button, it probably is one of the updated ones and it says pressure cook. Manual and pressure cook are the same thing in recipes. And then you'll adjust your time. Now the keep warm is on and this one I don't like because you actually have to press start. Whether you have one cup of rice or three cups of rice, the time stays the same. Your Instant Pot will say on and that just tells you that the Instant Pot has registered the time that you asked for and it's going to warm up. A little bit of steam or sputtering coming out of your lid is totally normal while it's building pressure. Once your Instant Pot has come to pressure, your display will start counting down from the number of minutes that you said. So it will start counting down from three. At that point, your Instant Pot should be completely pressurized and there should be no steam or sputtering coming out of the lid. Once your Instant Pot has finished the three minute pressure cook cycle, it will say L000. The L stands for lapsed time. At this point, the Instant Pot will start counting up 
telling you the number of minutes it has been naturally releasing the pressure. If you forgot to put the keep warm button on, then your Instant Pot will not say L, it will just turn off. Our rice is done pressure cooking and now we're going to check it out. If your Instant Pot still has the pin up like this, just go ahead and release the rest of the pressure. So now we're going to fluff up our rice. So I thought I was recording and I wasn't, but this is the one cup of rice. It's perfect. And then this is three cups of rice with three and three quarters cup of water. See so you no know sticking, perfectly fluffy. And you want to fluff it up like this before you serve it always. We've got perfectly cooked rice here, steamy. If you try out this method and it still is a little too hard for you, then you can pressure cook for four to five minutes or you can add an additional quarter cup of water. Here's a quick warning. If you leave your Instant Pot rice in the Instant Pot on keep warm for a long extended period of time, it can get sticky, it can burn, it can stick to the rest of your pot. So be careful. I find that rice really doesn't store super well because it dries out in the fridge pretty quickly. But what I really like to do with my leftover Instant Pot rice is to make rice pudding. I have a super popular Instant Pot rice pudding recipe and you can just rehydrate this rice with a little bit of water to make it nice and loose and then just follow the directions from my video or the recipe from my website. If you test out this method and you still think it needs to be a little bit softer, just add an additional five minutes to the natural pressure release or you can increase the pressure cook time to four or five minutes. If you want to find out how to make Instant Pot brown rice, click this video here. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time. Bye!